Test 2, Section 1. You will hear a woman calling an animal park to inquire about a job. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Pinder's Animal Park, hello. Oh, hello. I'm ringing to ask whether you have any jobs available. Ah, well, what sort of work are you looking for? Is that permanent or part-time or...? Actually, I'm just looking for temporary work. I'm a student. Oh, right. Uh, I'll just get a form and ask you a few questions. The woman says that she wants temporary work, so temporary has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Pinder's Animal Park, hello. Oh, hello. I'm ringing to ask whether you have any jobs available. Ah, well, what sort of work are you looking for? Is that permanent or part-time or...? Actually, I'm just looking for temporary work. I'm a student. Oh, right. Uh, I'll just get a form and ask you a few questions. Then I'll pass your application on to our recruitment section. Is that OK? Fine, thank you. So, starting with your name. It's Jane Lamerton. Is that L-A-M-M-E-R-T-O-N? There's only one M in it. Oh, right. And your address? It's 42 West Lane. Right. And is that in Exeter? Yes. OK. And can you give me your mobile phone number? O. Seven seven nine two four three zero oh, nine two one. Right. Now the next thing is, when are you available to start work? I finish college on the eighth of June. That's in three weeks' time. But I can't start work till the eleventh because I've got a hospital appointment on the tenth of June. Ah, no problem. Now, I need to ask you a few questions about the type of job that might be suitable. Do you have any particular kind of work in mind? It doesn't necessarily mean that you will get work in the field that you want, but I can record your preferences. Well, I'd do anything, and I have worked as an assistant animal keeper before, when I was still at school. But I'm studying at a catering college now, and I'd really like to get some experience as an assistant cook, if possible. Right. So that's your first choice. Have you done that kind of job before? No, but I've helped my aunt sometimes. She runs a cafe in Exeter. Hmm. Would you say you've got any relevant skills, then? Well, I'm used to using the kind of equipment you usually find in a kitchen. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. OK. And I know you're still studying, but do you already have any qualifications related to that kind of work? A hygiene qualification, for example? I haven't, no. But I've got a certificate in food handling. I did it before I decided to become a full-time student. Fine. OK. 
That means you wouldn't need any specific training if you did get the kind of work you wanted. But you'd have to do a short course on first aid. All our new employees do that. It just takes half a day, and most people find it generally useful. Oh, yes, I'm sure it is. Well, uh, that's about it, really. Oh, uh, just one last thing. Can you give me the name of someone who would give you a reference, like a previous employer or...? Oh, yes. You can put Dr Ruth Price. OK. Is that one of your college lecturers? She's my college tutor. She's known me for over two years, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind. In fact, she's given me a reference before. Fine. We'd probably contact her by phone. Do you happen to know her number? I've got it on my phone, yes. It's 0208 685 114. That's a landline. Good. Well, as I say, I can't promise anything, but I'll pass your application on and you should hear in a few days. Is there anything else? Just one thing. I suffer from a particular type of colour blindness and sometimes employers have to make special arrangements for that. OK, I'll make a note of that. It won't be a but it's good that you've made us aware of it. You can provide us with more details if you're offered a job. OK, thanks very much. Bye. Bye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Test 2. Section 2. You hear a club leader giving information to a group of young people who are planning to do a two-week holiday course at the Tamerton Centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 15. Hello, everyone. I've been asked to talk to you this afternoon about next month's trip to Tamerton Study Center for the two-week course. Now, some of the things I'm going to say you may have already heard or read about, but I think it's important to emphasize a few key points. First of all, it's worth reminding you why Tamerton was set up in the first place, in the late 1960s. That was really before all the concern with preserving the environment, which everyone talks about these days. The idea was simply to get people out of the cities and into the country and to find out that just being outdoors can be very rewarding. This is not going to be a holiday in the usual sense. It's called an adventure course because you'll really be stretched to your limits, but that in itself can be a positive thing. The group I took last year, for example, said that although they actually felt pretty weak and exhausted all the time, <laughs> it really made them learn a lot about themselves and increased their confidence. And in the end, that's the most important thing. Now, all of you knew about policies at Tamerton before you signed up for it, so you know that in many ways, it's quite old-fashioned. You don't have a lot of choice in what you do. But something which I think makes the place so special is that you get to try so many different things every day. For instance, one day you'll do climbing, 
and the next you'll be surveying rock pools. It's not intended that you become an expert in any of them. It's more like a taster, which you can follow up if you want. And there isn't a lot of free time. Organized activities and talks, etc., go on until 9 p.m., and lights go out at 11 p.m. There are table tennis tables with all the equipment and board games, though I have to say the pieces often go missing, so it's a good idea to take your own. There's a DVD player with a good selection of films suitable for this age group, so don't take yours. Bedtime at 11 p.m. is strictly enforced, and there's a good reason for this. You're all under 18, and we organizers need to know that all group members are accounted for in the house as we close for the night. And of course, you'll be so exhausted anyway that you'll be too sleepy to want to cause any trouble. Now you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, what should you pack? The information sheet tells you a lot about what clothing to bring. But what about other things? Well, Tamerton House has its own small shop. But anything there is several miles away, so you won't have many opportunities for buying supplies. So in this last part of my talk, I'm going to explain what objects you should take with you to the center, what you can take if you want, and also, very importantly, what you cannot take. Several of you came up to me before this talk and asked whether you can take things like kettles or hair dryers. The answer is, there are plenty of these electrical appliances available in the center and they are of the proper voltage and are checked regularly. Yours may not be, so the rules at Tamerton say you can't bring them into the center because it's considered a fire risk. Remember, it's a very old house. Now another question was about cell phones. Although you definitely can't have them on during inside talks, you equally definitely need them when you're out on exercises. So they're a must, I'm afraid. Anybody who wishes to talk to me about borrowing a phone for the fortnight, please see me after this talk. Now, the weather's heating up at the moment and you'll be outdoors a great deal. If you wear proper clothing, especially a hat, sun cream is optional. Also, they sell high factor cream in the shop, so you don't have to take any of your own unless there's a special kind you use. Now, there's a special note about things like deodorants, which come in aerosol cans. I need to tell you that these are banned in the center, because apparently they have the habit of setting off the fire alarms. If you want to take an aerosol can, you'll actually be at risk of being told to leave. And finally, people have been asking about whether they need to take towels. Well, the center does provide one towel per guest, which you're required to wash yourself. If you're happy with that, then don't bring another. If not, take one of your own. But just remember how much outdoor exercise you'll be doing and how dirty and wet you'll be getting. You might... That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.